And self-sabotage actually can prevent us from being our best self. And that's my ideal for you is for you to be at your highest level, whether it's personally, professionally, uh, mentally, emotionally, even physically, reaching those levels that frankly you deserve. But self-sabotage tends to come in when we feel like we don't deserve whatever we're getting. So let's get into the episode. If you have any questions or comments or even want to share a moment where you end up sabotaging yourself, I'm definitely going to share share some stuff here. Feel free to jump in the comments and uh, let me know what's happening. All right, the first question. What is self-sabotage? Really important thing, because we talk about, oh, they sabotage themselves. They're sabotaging this project. I sabotage this. What exactly does sabotage mean? If you have my newsletter or join Damon.me, you know I made a joke about it. I was talking about BC Boys Sabotage. So feel free to go to joindamon.me and learn more about the deeper discussion in regards to self-sabotage and what it can mean in our lives. But for here, let's define it. As I said in the newsletter this morning, self-sabotage often happens when we haven't fully, should be fully integrated our worth to our situation. Self-sabotage often happens when we haven't fully integrated our worth into our situation. In other words, if you have a fantastic relationship and they're everything that you want them to be and they love you and all that stuff, and then you do something and it becomes a train wreck, you might not feel like you deserve that love. If you get this great job offer and it sounds like everything's lined up and it's all good, and then you come up with something almost like, if you guys used to watch Seinfeld, which I guess is a classic now, it's like 20 years ago, but those moments, you know, you know the most I'm talking about if you watch Steinfeld where it's like you're in this perfect situation and then you do something. And it's like, why did you do that? <laughs> Maybe you feel like you didn't really deserve the job. One of my guys, Carl Young, it's weird to call him one of my guys. He was well passed away by the time I was around here. But one of my favorite uh, philosophers and, of course, one of the fathers, uh, forefathers, I should say, of modern sociology says, that which we do not bring to consciousness appears in our lives as fate. That which we do not bring to consciousness appears in our life as fate. So you ever meet somebody, or maybe you've been that person where it's just like, man, I almost had it, and then this thing happened, and I just have the worst luck in the world. And we've all had bad luck. I've, again, I got my stories. But at a certain point, it's like, you have to figure out what the common denominator is. If that happens to you five, six times, there might be something that you're blocking or something that you're bringing up. And not even from a spiritual standpoint, not even that deep, but just literally certain actions or motives or changes that you're doing that are preventing you from having the sex success that you want. Carl Jung kind of hit the nail on the head. He said this probably, probably a century ago, back when he was uh, coming out with his books. I have some um, other videos where I talk more about Carl Jung's work, that on link below, but we'll get into that in a second. Self-sabotage then is when you haven't fully integrated your worth to your situation. You might have a great situation, but if you feel like you don't deserve it, you're not worth it, you're not worthy of the situation, then it'll be like, let, let me knock myself down a peg. There's a lot of celebrities in the news right now. I'm not gonna get into it. There always are a lot of celebrities in the news right now. And you think about their actions or the stuff that's come to light and it's like, you seem to be at the pinnacle of where you're at. Why would you do that? You don't have to do that. But on some level, evidently they felt like they had to. And as I was talking to, to a mentor recently about it, it's almost like people say, okay, I'm actually not worth this. You guys think I'm a genius. You guys think I'm perfect. You guys think I'm exactly the amazing genius iconoclast, whatever you, whatever fancy Merriam-Webster word you want to throw out there, grab a thesaurus, throw it out there. But inside, I don't feel that. You all might say that, the crowd might say that, the populace might say that, but I don't feel that. And so I'm going to take myself down so you can see who I really am, because that feels like I'm being true to myself. It's not enough. It's not enough. The adoration of thousands, millions, in some cases, people, billions. And the more adoration they have, the more they feel like they're not worthy of it. And then they'll find ways to sabotage themselves. 
that's about as deep as it gets. Because I mean, why wouldn't everyone wants to love themselves? So there must be something that's preventing them from doing so. And that's that deep work that I've talked about a lot since actually since the, all the recent episodes have been a lot about deep work and going inside oneself. It's been a deep year for me, so I'm kind of taking you on my own journey. I'm far from perfect, but you know, I'm doing the work. And that's all that can be asked of someone. Are you doing the work? If you're doing the work, then the chances of that self-sabotage become smaller and smaller. If you're not doing the work, if you're not exploring your shadow side or understanding a deeper side of the work that of the uh, of how you're showing up in the world, then that self-sabotage should come out. As I said in the newsletter at joindamon.me earlier today, that shadow side tends to come out right when we're at our pinnacle. Um, with the Will Smith, Chris Rocket incident, I guess that was a couple years ago now. And that's essentially what he said when he when he got the Oscar after the slap. He was like, yeah, this, and he said it in his own particular way. But it's the same thing where that came out when he was at one of his career pinnacles. You can name a celebrity and those things happen. If you're not doing that deeper work, then it's going to come out and bite you in the ass. You got to think about those particular things. That's why I really want to do this episode today. As you can tell, I can, I can talk about this all day. I've been on my own journey with it and it's real talk. It's real talk. So you're like, all right, I know what self-sabotage is. What am I supposed to do with it? First recommendation, one of my favorite books, favorite books in the world. And as I've talked about, I've particularly this year, again, I'm working on myself a lot and I have like castles now uh, of books. Even after all those books and all the books that I've read, even all the books that I've written and all that stuff, this this is this is one of those ones, as they say. Easily top 25, maybe 50th book I've ever read in my life. I've read a lot of books. The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Fantastic. Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop ogling and, and going on and on about this book. Let me break it down to you. Number one, a lot of the theories and things that I talk about, I've talked about in my books. There's like five or six of them that come from this book where I just started to think about these theories. So shout out to Gay Hendricks, for real. And expand on them, of course, but expand on them. We could do a whole episode, or maybe we would will in the future. Jump in the, jump in the chat if you'd like that. His book, book basically says, we are the biggest limitation to our own success. Not in the sense of blame or that you should feel shame about it or if there's something wrong with you. More like we have mental limitations that prevent us from, hap- that's from happening. There's a, quite a few theories in here. That's why I'm kind of stuttering. But my favorite theory in here, and that's tough to say, is the upper limit problem. We call it a ULP if you want. The upper limit problem basically says, you want to go over here but you feel like you deserve to be over here. And so once you start to veer over here and get higher and higher, better and better, have that success, have that money, have that beautiful love of your life, whatever, whatever, then that upper limit problem comes in and says, no, 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 that's not who you are. I think the um, gay uses it as um, the description he used, if I remember correctly, he has, he has quite a few analogies. It's like a thermostat. And so, again, it's about 107, 108. We actually have a temperature warning here in Las Vegas. So it's about 108, 109 here. Okay, that's why you see the little sweat on my head. And our air, air conditioner is working. And it's still hot as heck in here. But it works like air conditioner. I'm not air conditioner, a thermostat. Or more like a, a, a temperature gauge. Where if it goes up to, say, 80 degrees, but you have it set for 74 degrees, then temperature, the AC or whatever the equivalent is, is going to kick in. And it's going to be like, no, 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 you said that you were at 74 degrees. Now you're at 80. We're going to turn you down. <laughs> and it could be 79 degrees. It could go all the way down to 70 degrees. Because it's like that little thing in your mind says, no, that's not who I am. I have a lot of relatives that are from the hood. I'm originally from South Jersey. I spent a little bit of time there, but that's not where I was raised. Mostly suburban and urban areas. And we talk about that all the time. Shout out to Camden, New Jersey. We talk about that all the time where you can get out of the hood, out of the rougher areas. Again, Camden back then, as well as now, is pretty rough. Much love to my folks that are out there. But once you live that, leave, uh, nice Freudian slip there. Once you leave that particular area, you still could have the same mindset of the people there that might be a little bit more limited. Not all the people, but some of the people. 
So I know Tim Ferriss had talked about this recently where his family grew up with very modest means. And now, like, he's very well known. He's probably been a millionaire several times over at this point, especially with his investments. But he'll still, I think it was some example he gave where he'll still buy the cheapest brand of toilet paper. And it's just like, right, but it's not good for his body. He's around my age, so we're both middle aged. And it's like, you can you can buy the Charmin. It's okay. <laughs> you, you don't have to buy the, the great value. No shots at great value. We have some of it. But do you understand what I'm saying? There's a, there's a level of... Um, of limitation and that's what he means by upper limit problem so if you're a janitor and you've been told you're going to be a janitor and nothing wrong with being a janitor and then you get the opportunity to be say principal of that same school and it happens like that there's going to be certain transitions and they have to be conscious that you're going to have to go through to make sure that you're ready for that for that leap again the big leap that's just one of the many many great theories on it again I might do a whole show about it. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to do that. But I can talk about that at all day. It's a fantastic book to start if you're trying to do less self-sabotage. And aren't we all? A good companion to this is a, a recent compilation I did, A Beginner's Guide to How to Know Yourself More. I had a live show talking about understanding your shadow. Had a, a, a couple other shows understanding the parts of us that we don't see. Uh, there's something called the Jahari Window where there's certain things that people see and certain things that people don't see. And the same for you. I'm not going to go and break in, break in. I've done whole videos on it. Feel free to look up Johari, J-O-H-A-R-I in the comments or on bringyourworth.tv and see what's happening. But basically there's certain parts of ourselves that we don't see, but, they, but that's reflective of how we show up in the world. If that's the case, then it's better for us to understand and empower ourselves in that regard. This episode gets to all that. It's probably about an hour and a half, might even be shorter than that. Might even only be an hour long, but it's like three or four different different techniques and tools in there, including a live show to break down what those insights would look like to do less self-sabotage, understand your shadow self better. I'm entrepreneurial coach, Damon Brown. You're watching Bring Your Worth TV every Wednesday at 1 11 p.m. Standard Time, Vegas time, as well as some bonus episodes as you see. Subscribe for free at the link below. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And while you're out there, go and check out the best, best of collection, the complete Bring Your Worth collection available everywhere fine books are sold.